Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our Father, we thank Thee this morning for this grand time of coming together again and to opening up the Word of the Lord, laying it here before us, and, and with prayer now that the Holy Spirit will take that which is God and will deliver it to us, that we might leave this place of worship today with happy hearts full of joy. To see your great power of deliverance, Lord, how it delivers the captive and sets them free, makes known to us the things that was and which is and shall come. And we just thank thee for these things. We pray that you'll bless us as we study thy word now together. Amen. And when we leave, may it be uh, said in our hearts as we go along the way, our hearts burned within us as he, the Holy Ghost, talked to us while we were in the way. Bless every minister today, everywhere, thy servants that's standing for this thy truth. Answer their prayers for the sick. <clears throat> Heal the sick bodies of those that are suffering. Lord, we would ask that you'd go out among the people and seek out that predestined seed out there, Lord, and bring it around in some way that the light will fall across the path, Lord, for we believe that the hour is getting late. The sun is swiftly sinking in the west. Then it will soon be that time shall be no more. The time and eternity will blend together when God and his people blends together. And we pray, God, that at that time that we will be numbered among those that will be blended into Christ as called his bride. Help us today as we prepare, knowing not what tomorrow will hold, but we are ready to receive anything, Lord, as far as we know that thou hast for us, we are ready to receive it. We ask this blessing for the glory of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I was sure happy this morning when I walked in and saw that the, the people gathered together for the service of the Lord. And we are giving announcement now for tonight. There will be healing service tonight. Uh, we'll be praying for the sick tonight. Just a few moments ago, there, as I come in, Billy, my son, told me, he said, there's a, a gentleman here that's uh, just a poor man that drove from a long distance and said, I, I put him in the room, Dad. I, I got in late last night and... and uh, didn't get to study much on the Sunday school subject that I was going to talk on this morning, so I picked up some little notes that I picked from what I heard some brothers say and took from that a text to kind of have the Sunday school lesson this morning and while we prepare and make ready for the evening service. And Billy said, there's a man in there that's sick that I, I, I wish you'd go by and see him. So I went into the room just now and brother about my age and his wife sitting in there, and the Holy Spirit came down among us in the room just now. I just think, just making mention of healing service, and there he was, see. And he told his brother all about what he had done and what he had been doing and what caused his trouble and where he come from and, and all about him. And there's a great dark shadow hung in the room, and it started getting lighter, 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 and the Holy Spirit took a hold. Now, I think the man is in the, somewhere back here now, he and his wife maybe can't get into the building, but they said they were going to stay anyhow for the service. They come from um, up around near Yakima, Washington, that drove in, and he's a minister of the gospel. But just to see the grace of, of God there were. The man had been in the institution and had treatments and everything, the Holy Spirit revealing all of this, when the doctor's trying hard to do everything that they could, perhaps, for the man, but it just took that certain little touch of God to turn the time. Shock treatments is all right, but it's kind of like we call a shot in the dark, you know, you 
it might make you worse. Because you forget everything you ever knew and when they put that medicine in you. But uh, the Lord God has grace and mercy. And even before I ever offered a word of prayer for him, it was already over. See? It just took that certain something of God, that certain touch to do it. Hallelujah. I ought to say this. I, yeah, I'd look over and see the man now. What? I didn't know whether he'd make it today or not. Uh, down in the country where I've been staying this week, I, I, I love my friends down there. It's a little vacation before these big meetings, you see, and I come home to go down there and to go out squirrel hunting with these brethren. And this family, families rather, that I stay with down there are certainly lovely people. And um, the man, real brother, friends, they are. And one of them is a great lover of, of uh, hunting dogs, and he has a pen full of them up there. And, and uh, I've seen the prettiest little hound down there, a little fellow with what I call about that half a dog high and two dogs long, you know, that uh, was running around the house. And I thought, my, wouldn't Joel like to have something like that? And, uh, of course, out in Arizona, I couldn't use him. He'd get in a cactus, and that'd be the end of him. So. Uh, then I said to you can't have the, they don't use dogs in there in that part of the country because they would well they uh, just couldn't use them they'd, to the weather the the condition of the country with cactus and it get killed and then threw a hound out there a, a wolf or something to kill him perhaps anyhow if he get out so then. This man said to me, you can just have him, but I, I couldn't take him. I, I appreciate it. Come to find out, it's one of his favorite dogs. And this man's got a lovely little wife, and little kitties. And the other day, she started back out with his car, and she had this Oldsmobile car. And the little dog's only about that long, just a puppy. And she ran right straight over him. That Oldsmobile going right across the little dog in his back here. And mashed it down where the rocks on the driveway had just pinched across his little stomach down here, you know. And, and the little wife, instead of running the little dog over to the veterinary, of course, the veterinary would just put it to sleep right there and kill it. And there's another young man with me, and Susie got up there and said, If that was my dog, I'd shoot it. So that's all. Let's suffer like that. I said, Well, let's not shoot it. I said, let's wait a little bit. Got everybody away and went and prayed for him. Little dog followed me up on the porch. And, you know. <laughs> yeah, see, see, whatsoever thing that you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive it. You shall have it and be given to you. Whatsoever thing. That's still our God, isn't it? Amen. He's, he's Amen. marvelous and wonderful. And we certainly love him this morning. And expecting him and knowing, seeing the other day uh, an old couple, uh, the mother and father of a very fine member of this, this congregation of believers. And the mother is, oh, I guess she's close to 100, and the dad is too. And for around 12 years, this man's never moved on his back, just when he's you know, if I can't lay on his side or nothing, laid there for 12 years, just old age. And the mother is now about his age, I guess, somewhere close to 100, and poor old thing is just about lost her mental control. She's thinking somebody's taking all she has. And I looked at the, across the table at all of us, young and old, sitting there, and I said, where are we going? What are we doing? And the lady that I was staying with then, that was her mother and dad. And I said, you're headed that way too. It's exactly every one of us. Sure. See? Just think of it just a moment before we start our lesson. That's where you're headed. What are you struggling for so you can live? What are you living for so you can die? Wouldn't it be most foolish if we didn't accept God's provision for eternal life? 
What could we think about? What, what could be on our mind that would uh, attract our attention from, uh, to anything? What if you owned a hundred million dollars and uh, you owned the state of, of Indiana or any other state or even the nation or as far as that concerned, the entire world? You live long enough, you've got to come to that too. See? And constantly, day by day, every time your heart beats, you're going right straight to that. See, you, there's no winning for you. You're on the losing side and you, you've got to lose. But remember the promise that he that'll lose his life for my sake shall find it. Amen. Now what would be any more of a treasure to find than life? Amen. Though you found the whole world to be yours. But if you, if you find life, you found the greatest thing that can be found. Yeah, but I want to look to my left and saw again just now another trophy of the grace of the Lord. Uh, About a few weeks ago, I was called to the phone and a lovely member of this church or this body I don't want to call this so much as a church. I, I want to call this that, like I was talking to some people, they said, well, what church you belong to? I said, I don't belong. What denomination you belong to? I said, none. I said, well, what do you belong to? I said, a kingdom. Amen. A kingdom. Amen. And by one spirit, we are baptized into that kingdom. Amen. By one spirit. All into this kingdom. Jesus said, pray. Thy kingdom come, thine will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Now, he stood one day before Mount Transfiguration, he said, Verily, I say to you that some stand here shall not taste death until they see the kingdom come in power. Amen. And it was foreshowed as we've been through it, Mount Transfiguration. And the Bible said the kingdom of God is with in you. Amen. Amen. So this is a kingdom people that professes that this is not their home. Amen. This is not our home. Amen. We are looking for the coming of the king. Amen. Amen. Set up the kingdom. Praise the Lord. I was called on an emergency case of a, an old brother that's been like a daddy to me. And he I haven't known him very long, but I remember the day that I took him in here for water baptism. And a man is soon be 91 years old. And his lovely wife called me, and her being a nurse said he had a complete heart failure. Besides that, he had, um, oh, I call, can't call the name, heart attack, coronary, heart attack, thank you. Coronary heart attack and a complete heart failure. Doctor give no hopes at all, and the man was dying and he called for him. And I got in my little old Ford and started up the road, go high as hard as I could, and uh, didn't know one of my wheels out of line, ripped the tire off of it. And so then I, uh, getting up there, coming out of the filling station about 11 o'clock, I was worried about him. I, I love him, and I no, if, the, if it continues on, the Lord uh, tarries, while well, sooner or later we're going to have to give each other up. But that won't hurt the rapture now, see. No, they come first. Them, them are privileged. It's gone on. They come first. The, we which are alive and remain to the coming of the Lord will not hinder or prevent those that are asleep. The trumpet of God shall sound. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then, when our eyes behold our loved ones, then we'll be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Hallelujah. And with them shall be caught up together. See, the ones that go first are privileged above those that are living. And as I stepped out of the station just at 11 o'clock, the Holy Spirit said to me, Don't worry about him. You'll shake his hand on the street again, and he'll come into church. A man, 91 years old, dying. When I met his wife and his loved ones in the hospital at Lima, they told me about his condition. 
went in, looked at him in there and said, but it's something strange. That he, he started changing for the better at 11 o'clock. <laughs> well, it, I, the Lord had showed them people so many things. They know it. I just didn't say that because they said it to me first. He started changing. They know that I would I'd tell them the truth. So last Sunday, as I was going into the Blue Boar Cafeteria in Louisville, where I think about 80% of this congregation gathered on Sunday afternoon to eat, who did I see coming down the street? I'll tell you, my heart quivered when I seen our brother Dow coming down the street. Exactly what he told me, and I shook his hand on the, on the street. Amen. Then I, I come back here for last Sunday night and spoke on the subject of the unity of the uniting of the time sign. So, and then that brought that to pass, just what he said, and here he sits in the church today right here by Amen. as a trophy of the grace of God, was uh, shaking his hand under the tent, oxygen tent he was under. I said, Brother Dow, you'll be all right. I'll see you in church again. Uh, that's thus saith the Lord. See? Yeah, here he sits in the church right here now. Brother Dow. And if I'm not mistaken, the ministry I was talking about a few moments ago, the Holy Spirit came in and revealed all these things, told him how it happened, and told him what he'd done, how it happened, how it come to pass. All that's been taking place since then, even to the character of his family and all about that, and told him that it's over. And the minister stepped right over here at the right hand. Would you just raise up your hand, sir? There, he and his wife. Exactly. Just now. You said, Brother Dow, right here now. Oh, my. Isn't he wonderful? Hallelujah. Those things which was, which is, and shall come to pass. Amen. One, two, three witnesses. The things which was, what you have done, the things that's going on now, and the things that will come to pass. And every time exactly, exactly Amen. on the work. Amen. That's only God can do that. Oh, aren't we most happy for these Amen. things? Amen. Now, the uh, reason I was taking just a little bit extra time, Billy had to go get his wife and baby, and he said, Daddy, don't start preaching I get back. <laughs> so uh, I think he's back now. I'm, I ought to have that much time anyhow, and I'm trying to get away from these four hours of uh, strain that I put you all under here and make it 35, 40 minutes, you see, and trying to keep it not. I, I was commented one time in Chicago, I got it to a 30 minute or something, 35 minutes, and last Sunday night it was only 45 minutes. Billy said, you're really improving, Dad. <laughs> I'm <really> proud of you <laughs> for that. Well, maybe this morning... To make it a little Sunday school type, I won't keep you too long, and you can go out and have your lunch and pray and come back tonight for healing services. We're going to form a prayer line tonight and pray for the sick. Now, if you know any peoples around anywhere that's sick and wants to be prayed for, you bring them here tonight. See? Uh, if you have to bring them anyway, get them here. See, that's the main thing is bring them here tonight. We all meet together. That way it's hard to make calls going place at your place, and you leave off somebody, and there's a hard feeling. But if I can get them all in one place, then I can pray for them. Now, if, you, if the people want to be prayed for, they, you say, we'll be, oh, certainly they'll be prayed for. Bring them on in. Lord, wouldn't we be here to pray for everybody? Because I feel that uh, that third pull is beginning to move. You see, with, with him, and I, I, I want to pray for everybody. Now, let us turn this morning to a familiar old scripture where I kind of picked up in a hurry last night, being real sleepy, and wrote out a few more scriptures to go with it, and taking kind of complimentary, and I heard some brother once use this text, and I thought, I jotted it down, I thought, well, I believe I'll jot that down because it might come in handy. A lot of times we do that. I know as many of you here have a piece of paper. And a minister can be saying something, and then you'll, you'll hit that point, something will strike within you, and then the Holy Spirit's doing that, and then you'll start building from that very point right there a message for the Lord. Amen. And that's all right. I notice in meetings wherever we go, just preachers and people jotting down. That's all right. We 
We are here. That's what we're here for, is to try to help one another on these roads. And now, let's turn to Revelation, the third chapter at the church ages. Uh, repeating a church age. But now, we are... We, uh, there, there, I could take this one text and with the Holy Spirit preach on a hundred years and never get what's in it out. Because in this one text, like all other texts of the Bible, it's all tied together. And I want to take my subject this morning of this. How can I overcome? Now, I chose this because that I think that it's a time that we should never let the spirit of revival die. Amen. We've got to keep in revival, constantly revive every day. Amen. Paul said he had to die daily that Christ could live, and we Amen. must never let that revival die within us. Oh, now, Revelations, the third chapter, and beginning with the 21st verse, we read this. To him that overcometh will I grant to set with me in my throne, even as I overcome and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Did you notice the, the arrangements of that? See, set with me in my throne, not on my throne, in my throne. That's in his domain, see? And now, as, as Christ is the ruler, throne ruler at this time of the complete domain of God, Amen. so will the church be with him, the bride be with him in his throne, in the entire domain. See? Not on my throne, but in my throne, see? where his domain reaches. Yeah, a throne is over a domain, and, and a domain reaches just as far as its boundaries does, and this is from eternity to eternity. Just think of it. Hallelujah. Now, as we study this, my purpose of this is just not to come here to, to fellowship with you people, which I love to do that, but of if I had a chance to do that, I would come to your home and shake your hand and talk with you and sit down and eat dinner with you and sit down under the shade tree and talk and fellowship a while. But when we come here, we are here for one specific purpose. This is the house of correction. Amen. This is the throne. Amen. This is the throne of God. And judgment goes forth from the house of God. Amen. And here's where we come together, get in love with one another as only Christians can love. But in here we are, we are under a, uh, a, a leadership of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost is among us. And we're here to, be, to take a reckoning among us, to see where our short places are. Are our shortcomings, and how can we catch from where we should be over to where we ought to be now, where we are to where we ought to be? And that's what we study. Ministers study those places for their people. When they see the people, the light, then they begin on that. Now, soon, I think that the church maybe should be taken just a little step higher. Uh, at this time, I don't plan on doing it this morning or showing these things, but I, I think shortly, the Lord willing, before we uh, preach on those trumpets, I want to, to, to bring the church just something that, that you should know, I believe, now. And now, we're speaking on this overcoming. The word overcome, of course, you know what it means. You've got to have something to overcome. And this uh, church age that the Holy Spirit was speaking about here, uh, the Lady of Sia church age, as we have just been through it, needed a rebuking. Lady of Sia had to be rebuked because of its 
it's uh, different towards Christ. If they uh, had put Christ outside in, the, in their age and Christ was on the outside trying to get back on the inside, that's love. After he had been put out of his own house, was trying to come back in and said, He that will open the door, I'll come into him. Amen. The church itself and whole had put him out. But now notice his call here is not to just the church. He that overcometh. See, not the church, that'd be she. See, the church body. But it's he that overcometh. The individual that will overcome. Now, and Laodicea had it coming uh, to it. Now we see then, knowing that this is the Laodicea age, and knowing that this age needs a sharp rebuke from God. It needs a sharp rebuke. And when uh, our clergy gets so soft and doty, like some aged grandfather to his grandchildren, ever what they do is perfect, and they're, it's been said so much that God is such a good God until they try to make God just a big doty grandfather, you see. But he is not. He is a father and a father of righteousness, Amen. of correction. And love is always correcting. See? Love corrects. No matter how bad it hurts, it still corrects. A real mother will correct her children. A real dad will correct. See? If you just get soft and doty and let it... I was crossing an old log the other day. Uh, uh, down a, a wash or what is called a holler. And I jumped up on this log on the outside. It looked good. looked like a big old beach log. But when I jumped on, oh, a great chunk of it fell off. It was real rotten and doty. I said, that's the way the Christians are becoming. They've been dead in sin and trespasses so long to become doty. They can hold no weight at all. They, they don't know what the overcoming means. Now I begin to think of this text thing. Overcome. Keep life in you. When life went out, that's what brought that log to that condition. See? And it made it worse than ever. When it laid in the branch where the water was. And then now you take a Christian that's supposed to be a Christian and let the life of God go from him and experience the joy of serving Christ and living in the church where such is going on, he rottens twice as quick. Amen. Amen. Right. Living right under it. So if we are trying to follow the message of the hour, or at least this part of the message, we should live constantly in the life of Christ. Amen. See? Because if it don't, you lay around and know that these things that you're supposed to do, and don't do it. The Bible said, He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it's sin. Amen. And you become doty, rotten, when you're separated from the life of God. So strive with all that's in you to stay in the life of Christ, Amen. that you'll be fruit-bearing. We see this age that we're living in. It's one of the grandest ages of all ages. Amen. This lady you see a church age is the grandest of all the church ages because it's the ending of time and the blending of eternity. And then it's the greatest sinful age. It's more sin in this age than it's ever been. And the powers of Satan is, is many times harder to fight against than it was in any age. Amen. See, here, back there, in the early ages, a Christian, for his profession of being a church belonging to Christ, could be beheaded for it. He could be killed and put out of his misery and go to meet God quickly. But now... The enemy has come in in the name of the church. Amen. And it's so uh, uh, deceiving. This is a great uh, age of deception. When Christ said so, the two spirits to be so close in the last days so it would deceive the very elected, if it was possible. See? 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 Remember... Christ spoke of an elected people for the last days. Yes. 
it would deceive the very elected if it were possible. So close, the people so live, people can live a clean, holy life. Not be uh, sinful, adulterers, and drinkers, and liars, gamblers. They can live above that and still not with it. Amen. Amen. This is the, the age of life, personal life of Christ, where the, the chemicals of his body, the, the what was in him, first under justification, the water baptism, second under the new birth of Wesley, sanctification, which cleanses, and thirdly under the baptism of the Holy Spirit, putting that sanctified vessel into service. The word sanctify means, it's a compound Greek word which means clean and set aside for service. Amen. Set aside for service. Now the Holy Spirit puts it in service. Amen. And we'll notice when the unclean spirit's gone from a man, he walks in dry places. That's exactly what the church has done. Baptist, Methodist, those who believed in sanctification, then, Jesus said, the unclean spirit that went out returns back to this church body and finds a house garnished, swept clean, living pure, clean lives, all right. But then, if that house isn't filled, occupied, then he comes in with uh, seven other evil demons worse than he was, and the last stage of this place is seven times worse than it was at the first place. they have been better to stay Lutheran than it would to be to receive that light and fail to follow it. Amen. So will the Pentecostal. You know what I mean? The house is garnished. As I talked to someone the other day, they said they're very careful, even many of the holiness groups not to call the Holy Ghost Holy Ghost because they identify themselves as the Pentecostals when they do that. They say Holy Spirit. Keep from saying Holy Ghost because the Pentecostal common people just call it what the Bible says, Holy Ghost, which Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost is the same thing. Amen. But they're very careful about it. They want to be identified with them tongue-speaking people. And that's the Holy Spirit itself. Amen. See, what happened then? When... The enemy that went out under sanctification, that was washed out, returned back and found the house not filled with the Holy Spirit. Now the state of the church is joined with the, with the League of Churches, with the World Council of Churches. And it's a state now that connected with the Roman Catholicism and all the rest of it. And now it's seven times worse than it was when Amen. it came out of Lutheranism. Amen. That's where man takes it. And then look at the lady of the church age after has received the Holy Ghost. Uh, and with the knowledge of, and the Spirit of God within it. And then the works of God is denied by it. Yeah. And called it an evil work. Then what about that? That's where Christ has put out of his own church. See, he, it never showed him in the church until it come to lady of Sia. And when he got to Lady of Sia, he had been put out of his church, trying to get back in. Now, see, justification never put him in. Sanctification just cleaned the place for him. But when the baptism of the Holy Spirit come, it put him in the people. And now they turned him out. When he began to show himself that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, they turned him out because they have denominated and the the Spirit of the Lord don't agree with their denomination. You understand now? That they put him out. We don't want nothing to do with this telepathy. It's, it's of the devil. It's fortune telling us. See? They don't understand. Eyes and can't see. Ears and can't hear. See, God only opens eyes as he will. He hardens who he hardens. He wishes to it. And it gives life to those who he desires to. That's what the scripture says. Amen. Now, we see these hours that we're in this stage, and we see what it was in the Holy Ghost is rebuking 
the age that put him out. But in all that, did you notice the him that overcometh? Even in that weary, wicked church age, a him that overcometh. We find here that God has always had overcomers. He's had overcomers in every age. There's always, every time in every age that there's been on the earth, God has always had somebody he could put his hands on as a witness in the earth. He's never been without a witness, though sometimes just one. But somebody overcomes. Now, like the saints of old, and uh, a very fine man, a scholar, was saying after the seven seals, he said, uh, Brother Branham, you being a, a typist, typologist, rather, said, how in the world are you going to put that church in the rapture without the tribulation period in a type? He said, you see, if it's a type, there's got to be, uh, uh, there's got, if it's an antitype, there's got to be a type for that antitype to come from. And everything I say that is true has a type. It has a type. You have a shadow. And the Bible said the old things was a shadow of the new things to come. He said, but now you took the Old Testament as a shadow. Now, he said, what are you going to do with this church? This man comes from a, a great uh, a man, a great teacher. That's a bosom friend of mine. Very good man. And he's a lovely brother. And I, I'd be scarce to say one word against the brother. I wouldn't anyhow, as, as, a, as a Christian, I wouldn't say nothing against him. He's, he, he don't agree with me on that one subject. But he, he's my precious brother. We eat together. And, oh, he's just a damn dear fellow. I take his magazine, read his articles, and he writes some of mine and so forth. And I've took him many texts out of what I, I've read, uh, read of his articles. Hear him say He's a great man, but he, he just can't agree with me. I appreciate that. Uh, if his sincerity, though, he don't just want these pushovers, he just has to agree with everything he say. He's got his own conviction, and he stands for it. I appreciate that. And he's a good man. Of, oh, I, I am not a teacher or scholar at all, but this man's both teacher and scholar. But I, I can't agree with him because I don't see it. But the, it, it doesn't pertain to salvation. It's pertaining to the coming of the Lord. He sees that the church has to go through the tribulation period for purification. I say the blood of Jesus Christ purifies the church. Amen. Indeed, so I believe that the church goes through the tribulation period, church organization, That's right. but the bride does not. Amen. Would you choose the woman you had to purify before you married her? <laughs> Christ's bride is chosen, Amen. and she is elected, Amen. and she's God's bride, Amen. the bride of Jesus Christ. And now he said, how are you going to type that? If that bride goes forth, goes up before she goes through the tribulation period, so i got scripture that shows you that the church is in the tribulation period. I said, just read the sixth seal. That's all. She's right there <laughs> under the tribulation period. But find out just before that, Amen. the bride's undone. Amen. She's in glory at that time. She has no purification. See? He that believeth on me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation or the judgment, Amen. but pass from death unto life. Amen. Christ gave the promise Amen. that we would not even stand at the judgment. So freely did he take my place until I'm absolutely free. When I'm pardoned, I'm pardoned. Amen. How can he take me out of the pawn shop and got a clear receipt of how can he be my redeemer and take me from the pawn shop and the broker still say I belong to him? Now I've got a written receipt. Amen. 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 See? Wrote by the blood of Jesus Christ. See? Now, in that, here's where we come. He said, now, how are you going to get, separate that elected bride you talk about? Now, how are you going to put that under a type? I said, very good. 
I say, here it is. Now, in Matthew, the 27th chapter and the 51st verse, if we, let me just read it, and then we, we got it good. Then we find out whether it was typed or not, whether it was the elected bride. Matthew, the 27th chapter, and the, and the 51st verse. All right. We read this. At the crucifixion of our Lord, and behold, the veil of the temple was written twain from the top to the bottom. Amen. Now that was the law. The law ended right there because the veil kept the congregation from the holy articles of God. Only an anointed priest went in there, and that once a year. Remember? Now God with his own hand noticed from the top to the bottom. Not from the bottom to the top, there's some 40 feet high. Notice, not from the bottom to the top, but from the top to the bottom showed it was done by God. Amen. Rent the veil in two, then though, anyone, whosoever will, may come and partake of his holiness. All right. From top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection, went into the holy city and appeared to many. Amen. There's that elected, that bride. Not all of the Jewish church come forth at that time. All of them made the same sacrifice. All of them was under the shed blood of the Lamb. But there was an elected group. And that elected group, as soon as the event come, that really believed in it, was sincere. Sincerity. Now, I'm coming to the word overcome. Now, hold that. These that have really overcome, sincerely making the same offering that the rest of them made, but in sincerity, overcome the things of the world. When the propitiation correctly was made for them. They were in paradise until that play, that time. When that time was made, they had overcome and was resting, sleeping. See, many bodies of those that slept in the dirt. See, slept. Amen. Now, if we had time, we could go on back to Daniel. When Daniel, that elected one, that had overcome. And he said, close up the book, Daniel, for thou shalt rest in thy lot. But when the prince shall come, which will stand for the people, thou shalt stand in the heart. Here it is. Daniel, this prophet of God, saw the end time coming. And he said, Daniel, you'll stand in your lot in that day. Here he was, come forth. Not all of Israel, but the bride type of Israel. Now the rest of Israel don't come forth until the general resurrection. And now at the coming of the Lord Jesus, those who are really loving His coming, that's living for it. When He appears in the sky, Amen. the church is dead and Christ shall rise in those who He changed in a moment. The rest of them will know nothing about it. Remember, appear to those in the city. Amen. See, yes. the, the, the rapture will be like that. Amen. We'll see each other, and we'll see them. The rest of the world won't see them. Amen. And will be caught away Amen. as a secret going, Amen. waiting for that time, then returning back to the earth for that glorious millennium, then the thousand years the rest of the dead live not for a thousand years and then come forth the general resurrection where all Israel and also look at there, the twelve apostles, the twelve patriarchs, all represented, and we ain't never got to that yet. Maybe the Lord willing we'll get to it in the testament how that those walls of Jasper and twelve stones, twelve gates, twelve foundations, all that's represented here they are on twelve thrones. The angel messengers of those days to pass judgment yeah, upon those who rejected their message. Hey, man. Oh. There comes forth that great hour. 
Yeah, what a day, what a time that we're living. How that we should check up, church. How we talk about these things coming, that's going to come now today. Let's drop back here and see, check ourselves and see if we're right in the faith. Now, let's talk of a few overcomers for a few minutes. In the days of Noah's time, which was typed by Jesus Christ, of being like today, I was supposed to have ten minutes down to be half hour. I just get the start of the first page. <laughs> I'll skip a few of them if I can to get what in Noah's time, type of today. Jesus referred to it and said, "As it was in Noah's time, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man." In Noah's time, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Notice there were all that antediluvian world. Perhaps of millions of people, there was eight overcomers. Eight people overcome. That was real genuine overcomers. There was Noah's three sons and their wives and Noah and his wife. Eight overcome that entered the ark at the appropriate time. How did they do it? They listened to the word of God. They wasn't caught outside the door. They were caught inside the door. Oh, my uh, beloved friend, don't let that door shut. Jesus said, as it was in that day, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Thank you, So shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Now, if somebody is going to get caught outside that door, Many of them might have had good intentions, and someday, if such things happen, we'll go in with Brother Noah because he's a fine fellow. Uh, but you see, it caught just eight inside. Amen. Now, think hard now. If you are laying around getting doty, get in! Amen. Hurry, quick! Because the door might close at any time. Amen. And there's always been an ark in God's economy. There was an ark in the days of Noah for the saving of his people. There was an ark in the days of the law. The ark of testimony. In the days of the law. They followed the ark. And there is the third dispensation now. Like Noah's time, Lot's time, and now this time. There is an ark now. And that ark is not a denomination. Neither is it a good works that you do. It's by... One spirit. Amen. Romans 8, 1. We are all baptized into one body Amen. in the domain of that kingdom. Hallelujah. One spiritual baptism. Amen. No matter how good, how bad, whatever, you're in that kingdom by, by Holy Ghost baptism. Amen. Amen. See? That's the only way you overcome is all that is under the shed blood is overcomers. Because you cannot overcome yourself. It's he that overcomes for you. Amen. You're resting. How do I know that, Brother Branham, that I'm in there? Watch what kind of life you're living. Amen. Just look around. See if it's just lived out of you automatically. Or do you have to strain and pull? See, then you're doing it. But don't try to do it. You ever try? Just, don't, just like putting a little baby's arm in a sleeve hole, you see? He's just up, down, over, and everything else. See? He can't do it. Put on your coat, honey. He can't do it. His little arms up, down, and around. It takes your steady hand. Amen. Oh, how glad I am. Yeah. Now I can just heal my hand to Father. Say, Lord Jesus, I can't get in there. You help me. Amen. Put the coat on me. Amen. I quit trying. Just let him do it. Hallelujah. See, as the little baby keeps trying, oh, I can do it, I can do it, and he's just everywhere. He can't do it. Neither can you. Neither can I. But if we just hold still and let him do it, Amen. just yield to him. Here, Lord, here I am. Just, just uh, let me be nothing. Uh, 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 you, you put my hand in the right place. That's the victory. That's overcoming. The thing you have to overcome is yourself. Amen. Your ideas. Your thing. And surrender yourself to Him. 
He overcomes for you. He knows the way. We don't. But in Zohar's time, there was eight overcomers. And that's what went in. They were caught inside. Now look, uh, friends, I believe they're taping this. And if it's on uh, 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 television, or not television, pardon me, it's tape, whatever you do who's listening now, or who will listen hereafter, the hour is very late. And you do have good intentions. But be caught inside. Yeah. Now don't struggle. Not him that willeth or him that runneth, but God. Amen. Just let God. Just yield yourself to him and walk on. With a perfect, satisfied faith that what God has promised, he's able to perform. Amen. Not joining one denomination, another denomination, running this, that, or the other, trying this. Just yield yourself to God and walk with him. Peaceful, quiet, not interrupted. Just keep on walking with him. That's right. That's what I told her brother that just had the, the breakdown. See? Just yield to him. He's here. He who knows what you have done and what caused your being you doing this way and all that, he knows all about you, and now he's just told you back. Just what to do. Now, I said, the only thing you have to do, just go do it. That is, forget all about the past. Walk, live for the future in the glory and presence of God. Eight overcomers. In the days of Daniel's time, there was four overcomers that could stand the test of fire and line. Right. Now, we're expected to be tested. That's a good lesson for my, my brother back there also. He that cometh to God must first be tested. Amen. Tested what? With the word. Amen. That's God's test. Do you believe it? Amen. He that cometh to God must be tested. That only shows a true child. Amen. Be tested. And when the test comes on, you can't overcome unless there's a test given to you. And when the test is given, it's to see whether you can overcome or not. And Jesus said to him that overcometh. Amen. The test. The test is the greatest thing that ever happened to you. Yes. And I believe it's written in the scripture. Peter said uh, that our trials are worth more to us than precious gold. Hallelujah. It's a testing time. It's a one good evidence to us that God is with us when we're tested. For all children of God are tested and tried. Amen. And Daniel... A man, a prophet, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel was a prophet, and that was the size of the church in that day. I mean the bride. There's lots of church. About two million of them went down there. But there was, that was the size of the overcomers. And them overcomers was put to the test. Every overcomer has to be put to the test. Amen. And when they said, you take back what the Word says, or either be thrown in the fiery furnace, uh, they refused anything but the Word. Amen. And when Daniel was given a test, that he should take back what the Word said, that they should lean towards the temple as Solomon prayed, and he would deliver them from all things God would hear from heaven if they looked towards the temple and prayed. And said, if any man prays within these amount of days, and we're a Medes of Persia, you cannot change or alter our laws, that man will be thrown into the lion's den. They set a trap for him. I believe that prophet knew that. But they set a trap for him. He walked humbly. When it comes time for him to pray, when he knew it at the home place in Jerusalem, that was a burning sacrifice on the altar. Daniel was afraid of them spies raised up the shades and threw back the shutters and knelt down on his knees and throw his hands up to God and pray. Why? Little or not, he had the victory. And therefore, he's so much victory to the lions couldn't eat it. <laughs> he, he overcome. And, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Benigo had so much victory until the lion, until the fire couldn't burn it. You know, victory is a hard thing to burn out or eat up or anything. So they, they had it. I might mention another character. In the days of Lot, Jesus referred to it. 
There were only three that overcome. Lot and his two daughters. Not even his wife didn't overcome. She, she started out, she's a type, wish we had time. My 30 minutes is up right now. She, she, she done all right. She left. Now, I've got to give this to you just a moment. Many of you have left too. Many of you left these things to take your stand after you search it through the scripture and find it's right. You've seen the vindication of Almighty God, but not for some what somebody said was a vindication, what the Bible said would be, and here it is doing. You saw it was the truth. So you set out to leave Sodom, leave the denomination, leave the things that bind you to a creed, and to follow Christ by the Holy Spirit. Vindicating himself by the written word of God. In other words, you took the Bible instead of the creed. Amen. You set out to follow. Well, Lot's wife did the same thing, you know. She set out to go with Lot. Follow her husband, her children, her loved ones. But it wasn't in her heart. She still loved the world. So it's possible you can make a start and still be the world in you. See, she never overcome. And even though she was well on the road, it finally overthrew her. She had to take that one big, long, last look. That's where she got caught. Don't even look back. Don't have no desires. Keep going. Put your mind on Calvary and keep moving towards Christ. See, she started out as an overcomer, but she never did overcome. Or she left the denomination. She did. She walked out of Sodom with Lot. But she wanted to go back and have her hair cut. You know, for him. She had to go back. She just couldn't stand the, the test. She had to look back again to see what the rest of them was doing. Oh, you know, I had some good friends down there after all. And after all, this might be just a little, a little move. I don't know whether it could be right or not. I've, I've only got this man's word for it. Though he's my husband, but yet uh, your, your pastor is your husband, spiritually speaking. You see. Now, whether it, it could be a right or not, I don't know. Maybe he, his revelation wasn't right. It, it, then if you're not perfectly satisfied, you're not perfectly know that it's the Word of God, then, then you can't go. Amen. You've got to be really sold out. That's right. You've got to know it. Hallelujah. Not just say, well, I see others doing it. I see a sign. You know, Israel started out, I could say the same thing and bring it in here. They started out two million strong and ended up with two men. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Right? Amen. They saw the works of God. They saw the manifestation of the Spirit. They saw great, mighty miracles being done there in Egypt and everything. It started out, but it, it wasn't in their heart. They didn't overcome. They just come out, and Jesus said, and they perished in the wilderness and are eternally dead. Every one of them is dead. That means eternal separation. Every one of them rotted in the wilderness. But there was two men, Joshua and Caleb. Yes. And when it comes to the showdown, the obstacles were so great till they looked like grasshoppers sight of them. Joshua screamed out with Caleb and said, We are more than able to do it. Why, yeah. God said so. Yeah. And they were overcomers. They overcome. They was the ones that was privileged out of that whole great organization of people to take the real elected bride into the promised land. Amen. Amen. Joshua and Caleb in the front lines out there as the two generals read them right down to the river and crossed the river over into the promised land. Why? They believed the word. No matter what, Dathan raised, Dathan rather raised up and so did Korah. And they tried to say, this man's trying to make himself above all the rest of us. He's more holy than the rest of them. After God had thoroughly vindicated the man. They said, we'll just start a group of people. We'll make this, that, or the other. We'll make our organizations. We'll do it. And they died and perished. Amen. But those men had that word of the Lord and they stayed with it. Amen. And they went over. Not he that starts, he that finishes. Many start the race, but there's one finishing it. There will be many churches start, many groups of people, 
There will be one group finish. Amen. Amen. That's the overcomers. Amen. Lot's day. Yes, she had to have that one great long look back. Oh, I'm leaving so and so down there. Them fine times we used to have. I'll never forget it. And she was clock shut out. Like it was in the days of Noah. She was shut out without mercy and she perished. And the, the lump still stands there today. They claim, I don't know, you could break a piece off of it and it'll grow back. A salt pillar. If you ever see that uh, uh, picture of Sodom and Gomorrah, you'll see the original uh, pillar of salt that stood there. Now there's a difference between a pillar of salt and a pillar of fire. You have to turn one way. Uh, notice, in John the Baptist time, in John the Baptist time, there was found six that had overcome. All ages have had overcomers. In John's time, they had six. That was Joseph and Mary, Zechariah and Elizabeth, Simeon and Anne. A man and a woman, a man and a woman, a man and a woman. See? Type of Christ the church, Christ the church, Christ the church, Christ the church. Amen. See? Amen. Notice it starts from the natural man, Noah, Moab, Joseph. The natural man, Joseph, what was he? A carpenter. Then the priest, what was he? See? A minister in the house of the Lord, Zechariah. And from that to Simeon, a prophet and a prophetess. See, the certain justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Don't you see it? Amen. Perfectly. Six overcome. All the rest of them, they offered their sacrifices and everything, but these were elected. They overcome. Notice, each church age, the same overcome, when they each some out of each church age overcome the temptation of that age. I've got the scriptures here. I don't think we really have time to make it, but we know each one of the church ages. Same now. It's just like someone who is, see, as I said at the beginning, you are born defeated. And that birth can never bring you to, to uh, life because you're born defeated. And you're in a defeated world amongst defeated people, amongst defeated creeds, uh, uh, defeated denominations. You've got to come to victory some way. It's just like a lily. Whereas a lily, I think, is one of the most pretty flowers that there is. I'm very fond of those great cow lilies and pond lilies. I think there's nothing hardly as pretty as a great big a pond lily, call it water lily. How it's radiance. And where does it come from? It's a little seed down in the bottom of a muddy, mucky pond. And that little seed, yet all the radiance that will ever shine in it is in it right then when it's in that mud. But it has to strive daily knowing that there's something that's black, it's dirty, it's mucky, it's slimy. And that slime that it's living in, yet it presses its way through the mud, the muck, and the waters and the stagnant places until it sticks its head above in the light and expresses what's been hid in it all the time. I think that's an overcomer. At once did sin. Once did things that was wrong. Don't worry about it now. Once did things that was wrong. Then, uh, now, while look back into the pond again, See, look, you have God, by his predestination, see, has brought this seed to life. And it's pressing itself. See, coming to life. And now, on top of all of that, it has overcome. See, it doesn't express itself down there. It's getting up to express itself. Neither did you and your, your sin and adultery and everything that you lived in. You didn't express nothing, but there was a seed in there. 
and it got a chance to press itself into life. And now you're in the presence of Jesus Christ with the sunlight. It brought out what you really was in the beginning. You see what I mean? You saw the light. You bloomed out. You laid your heart open. And now you're a lily. You remember my sermon on the lily. Reverend Lily. How he toils. And yet does he not spin. And yet Solomon in all his glory is not arrayed like Ever. one. He's, he's, he, 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 look at him. He's ready to get. He takes nothing for himself. The lily don't care nothing about himself. What does he do? He's, he throws his beauty out. His life that others might see. His life is expressed out that others might see the glory what's in him. That was in him in that mud. Now he's on top. That's the overcomer. He overcome the mud. He overcome the things of the world. And now he freely gives himself out. Everybody can look at him. His life, he can't put a finger on it. He's a real overcomer. You can't stand on the body now. It would say, come out of the mud, but he's not in the mud now. He's on top of it now. Amen. Amen. You can't stand for him back what he was. What is he now? Amen. He's on top. Then the bee comes by and says, that wonderful perfume. I believe I'll go and get my part. He just opens up his heart. Come on, I'm all right. Everything takes from him. See, he's, he's a real pastor. He expresses the glory of God and look where he comes from. He had to overcome to do that. One time, he or she was young and fair, beautiful. They had a lot of temptations to go through, but they overcome that, see? They overcome now they're expressing the real beauty of Christ in their life. Notice, expressing through the mud. Jesus gave us the example how to do it. Now we want to know how to overcome. Jesus told us how to do it. See? Humility. Girded himself, took a towel, washed the disciples' feet, and wiped them. The very God of heaven humiliated himself. We don't want to be humiliated. That's the reason women don't want their hair to come out. That's right. Amen. The reason they don't want to dress like ladies should dress, like men don't want to see. It's the same thing. They don't they, they get humiliated. But Jesus constantly, look who he was. Greatness. I'm going to say something. Amen. Greatness hum humiliates itself. Yeah. Grace humbles itself. Greatness. I've had the privilege of getting meeting some great man. And it's these guys who's got to change the clothes and 50 cents in their pocket and to rattle. That's the guy that thinks he's something when he's nothing. But I stood a great man. Amen. I mean, great man. With ragged sleeves, cuffs. Yes. And they make you think you're the great person. See? Greatness is humility. Amen. Don't forget that, church. Greatness is expressed in humility. Amen. Not how fine you can be. I don't mean dirty now. I, I mean humble in spirit. Amen. See? Amen. I don't mean just get, get out and go over and wash and clean up. That You should do that. You know that. But I'm talking about humility, genuine humility, not something's put on, something it is. That's real humility. Jesus told us how to do it. He overcome. Mean, overcome means to stand the test. That's right. Like uh, all the old saints did. Like Jesus did. In the midst of all of his enemies, he stood the test. Everything he was tested against, he stood it. In the very face of sickness, in him being Messiah, he healed it. In the face of death, he brought it back to life. In the face of Calvary's own death, he defeated it. By surrendering himself. Why? By the word. Said you destroy this temple and I'll raise it up in three days. The word said so. Amen. And in the presence of death, he defeated it. He overcome death. In the presence of hell, he defeated hell and overcome hell. Yes. In the presence of the grave, he overcome the grave. Amen. Why? All by the word and humility. 
Oh, my. There's the real man. There's the one that make your example. See, he defeated everything, overcome it. Look, temptation was for him. Did you know that? The Bible said he is tempted in all points like we are, yet without sin. He was tempted by, by drinking. He was tempted by women. He was tempted by everything that could be tempted by. He was tempted by everything that we are. He was a man. And yet you couldn't put a mark on him. Yes, sir. Overcome means to recognize the devil in every one of his tricks. A lot of people say there is no devil. It's just a thought. Don't you believe that? There's a real devil. Amen. You're just as real as you are, anybody. A real devil. And you must recognize him real. You must know he's a devil. And then at the same time that you, you recognize him and know it, he's a devil and he's against you, then to overcome, you must recognize that the God in you is greater and mightier than he is. That the one that's in you has already overcome him. And by his grace, you're more than a match for him. Amen. Amen. There's real overcoming. When you recognize, you look back and say, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And, uh, you, you, you're defeated. But there's no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Amen. That walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen. Then you realize that you've overcome. And you know that he's a devil. You can't say, i got a sickness. And I, 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 I don't believe it is a sickness. Oh, yeah. It is a sickness. You got cancer. You don't believe it is a cancer. It is a cancer. It is a cancer. But remember, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. You must realize that the Holy Spirit that's in you has already overcome this thing. Amen. And he is in you and you can overcome by him. That's exactly sensible. That's exactly the way the scripture is written. Overcome i got to hurry. I've done got 45 minutes now. I'm really running over time now. Notice, overcome. The God that's in you is greater than the one that's in him. The God of the world is not as great as the God of heaven which is in you. No more than darkness can stand in the presence of light. Now, darkness cannot stand in the presence of light. I don't care how dark it is. Light will put it out. Yeah. It can't stand. Right. Glory. But you take as much dark as you want to and try to stand against light one time and see what happens. Yeah. That's the one that's in you is light. Amen. Amen. And the one that's in the world is darkness. Amen. So the light has proved to overcome the darkness. And the Amen. man that's in Christ and knows that he's overcome the things of the world. Amen. 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 It has no more time to see it all. You're free. Hallelujah. Walk in the light Amen. as he is in the light. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin and we have fellowship one with another. There you are. He that's in you is greater than he that's in the world. Amen. Now if you look back, you're condemned. Then you're, you're still in the world. Right. But if you're living above that, then he that's in you has led you above the darkness. Like the lily, he's above the darkness of the mud. He's above the darkness of the muddy waters. He's in the light, reflecting the beauty that was put in him before he left the mud. Amen. Amen. Now, I feel like a shouting Praise Christian. God. Yes. Amen. What was in there by God Hallelujah. at the beginning, it pressed its way through. Overcome. It overcome the shell. It overcome the mud. It overcome the waters. And overcome everything. Amen. I was an overcomer and reflected the beauty and glory of God. That's the way every believer does. Amen. That's the way Noah did. That's the way Lot did. That's the way, look what a mess he was in. That's the way Moses did. That's the way Joshua did. That's the way Daniel did. That's the way Shadrach and Meshach did. That's the way John the Baptist did. Zachariah Elizabeth. That's the way that Simeon. That's the way that Anna. Amen. Every one of them did. They overcome the mud that there was around them and packed into them. Amen. Stuck their head above the thing and shined forth the glory of God. Amen. That's what a real Christian does. Remember, Jesus showed her how it's done. 
40 days of temptation, he was tempted above any man that ever could be tempted. And the temptation of Jesus Christ. Watch. He showed us how it's done. I, I will close just in a few minutes. Look, he showed us how it's done. How did he do it? By the Word. Amen. That's how he did it. Amen. For he was the Word. Amen. And uh, Jesus said, if ye abide me and my words in you, you're back to the Word again. Amen. The Word of promise. What is the Word of promise to every Christian? Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. Then how do I overcome? Not me, but the Word that's in you. The Word is God. Then I overcome the things of the world because it's the Word in me. If ye abide in me, my words in you, then just ask what you will. Just keep pressing up. You're coming to the top as sure as anything, see? You've got to come to the top. It's 40 days of temptation. By God's Word, He overcome. I want to express something here just for a few minutes. Satan made three major assaults upon him. And that temptation. Watch, it's always in threes. Don't forget me. He made three major assaults from the highest to the lowest. He tried his best to conquer him. But he was the Word. Amen. Amen. What did he use? Himself. Amen. The Word. Amen. Satan's three major attacks or assaults upon him. But he met it with the Word. Every attack, he can make it with the Word. Watch this now. From the highest to the lowest. The first he made his attack upon to use his great power, which he knew he was the Word. He knew his position. You believe he did? I am the Son of Man. He knew his position. And Satan come and wanted him to use his own power on himself to feed him. He wanted to feed himself. He's hungry. A man gets hungry, he can do almost anything. He'll steal, rob, beg, borrow, anything. See so how that appetite. And Satan used his first great major assault upon him to take his power that he had been given to overcome with and use it on himself. He didn't use it on himself. No, he used it on others. Amen. Yeah, that's right. He used it on others, not himself. It wasn't for him. Though he could have done it. Yeah. He certainly could have done it. But see how the devil gets? The devil wants you to mind him. Yes, he minded only what the Father said to him. That's right. He said, by Satan said, it's written you give the angel charge. To he said, yes, but it's also written. Yes. There you are. See, he knew who he was. Satan did. The thought runs deeper than what it's wrote. See, it's inspiration. The kernel is on the inside of it, you see, what it really is. Though he could have done it, he didn't do it. But he... He never paid heed to Satan's proposition. Now, here's a good thing. See, sometimes Satan can take you. And when you think that you're doing the will of God and can make you a proposition, you'll fall for it. Yes, sir. You sure can. Now, let's just take, for instance, like our sisters. They're pretty. And he can get you to a place that you let your hair grow out. You didn't realize it looks so nice on you. The first thing you know, you get kind of feeling a little stuck up. A little above something else. Some of you man, you know what I mean. See, and he can take that same thing and proposition it with you. That's right. You got to overcome that. Just remember, you're living for God. Amen. You have one objective, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. Outside of that, there's nothing else counts. That's him. Then secondly, for your family. Then thirdly, for yourself. But first, for God. Next, for your family. And next, for you. You're number three. That's the end of the road. You put yourself last. He did. Look what he could have done. But I could call my father, speak to him, his straightway, send me twelve legions of angels. Well, one of them could destroy the world. Instead of my kingdom is this world, and my subject to fight. But my kingdom is up above. There you are. See, he could have done that. But he didn't. See. Though he could have done it, he never listened to Satan's proposition. Now, have you heard people say, if, if, if you believe it, there's a divine healer, if you're a divine healer, go get your divine healer. i got a man over here sick. I'd like to see him healing. Amen. See that same devil? Amen. He's trying to proposition with you. Amen. He's trying to make you listen to him instead of God. Amen. But a real true servant of God will listen to see what Father says. Amen. Like the little stats click baby. 
when they sent over here, Miss Dashley said, Brother Branham, I called from Germany. There was the American Army with one of their jet planes sitting out here at the field. Would fly me to Germany and back in a day. He was a chaplain. And the baby's laying dead and that little mother screaming. She said, listen, but I know I stood right there and seen that woman hold that dead baby in her arms and died that morning. I see Brother Bram walk right out there and lay hands on that dead baby. They come to life. Said, this is my baby, Brother Bram. Never been a death in their family, see. And this little thing took sick one morning and died that afternoon. Here was all of them standing around and giving prophecies and things. The baby's going to raise up and all like that. I said, well, that's mighty nice, Sister Stackley, but let me see what Father said. Amen. And I went out to the woods and I prayed. Come back in. She done called two or three times before. Got back the next morning. Nothing. The doctor said, all right. Said, if, that, if you have faith like that, lady, we'll never let the baby leave the hospital. Let it lay right here. If you stay right here with it, that's all right. Brother Stackley went and seen the Army and Major. And they said, sure, we will fly him over and bring him back. And there was a plane set and waiting to take me over that morning to bring me back that night to Germany, to Heidelberg, Germany, for the resurrection of this baby. I said, sure, God can do it, but let's see what his will is. Yeah. Then I went out and prayed all night. Nothing happened. Come back the next morning. Nothing happened. And I started into the room. Just then I looked there, and there stood that light hanging there in the door. I said, don't put your hand on that. Don't rebuke that. That's the hand of God. I got her on the phone. I said, Sister Stackley, bury your baby. It's the hand of the Lord. It's God's will. Something had that baby down along the line. You leave it go right where God knows where it's at. You can go to it now. If it lives, you won't. You leave it out right like that. That great Lutheran preacher in Germany wrote a letter and said, How I can appreciate what Brother Branham waiting for that clear cut decision of God before he said anything. That's it. Hold to God's decision. No matter what others say, whatever it is, don't prophesy to Satan at all. If Satan says now, a water baptism in the name of Father, says that he prophesies, you leave it alone. God said otherwise. He said, you're a good man. You don't have to be. You're a good woman. You don't have to do it. Don't you proposition. If the word says something different, you stay with the word. Amen. Regardless of what it is. That's the example Jesus gave to you. And there's that major assault, you see, that he made on him. Then, the second assault, a hurry. It just looked like the time just goes so fast. The next great assault was that he made upon him that he would be a show off. Yeah. And how that does hit God's servant. Oh, to be a show off. Yeah. To show what you can do. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm a deliverer. I'm so big. Hey, Come up here on top of the temple and sit down here. He tempted him to do it. Now remember, he was tempted to do it. Yeah. It was hard. So now, if you want to be something before the people, stand up here on this temple and jump off. See, I'll give you the scripture for it. Because it's written, he'll give the angels charge over thee at that time that they should put against the stone and bear thee up. To make him a show off, to show his authority. No true servant of God ever does that. Amen. You see a man showing off his chest out and all like that, just remember there's something wrong there. Amen. No, God don't want that. Jesus set the example. He could have done it. He certainly could have done it. But he didn't do it. No servant of God is a show off of himself to try to take God's power and show himself above somebody else. You remember Moses did that? You remember? God gave him power to do whatever he wanted to. He made him a prophet. He walked down to that rock and he smote the rock the second time. That was against God's will. God said, speak to that rock. Don't smite it again. You break all the, all the, the type here. The rock's only going to be smitten once. But he spoke of the weakness of the word when he did that. That it wasn't sufficient. Yeah, the word was what was going on. That rock was the word. The first time he smote the rock and the waters come forth. And then they got thirsty again. He said, now go back and speak to the rock. He's only smitten once. See, the insufficiency of the word. Moses testified to it. The word wasn't right. He had to be smitten again. So Moses went in there and smote the rock like that. He said, come forth. He didn't come forth. So he smote it again and said, come forth. I command you to come forth. And the water's come. God said, come up here. Come here. You glorified yourself. You took my power instead of sanctifying me. You sanctified yourself. 
Now you're not going over in the land. Look over and see what it looked like. But here you're going to leave right here. Oh, my. There never has been one like Moses, you know. No, no. When he come to that show off with Jesus, he said, get up on the temple here and jump off. He said, it's written. Amen. Don't tempt the Lord thy God. He met him with the word, and that ever made you a self. The old true servant ever tries to show himself off with, and it was God's power. If he does, he loses right then. Third greatest self. Satan offered to forfeit this kingdom to him. He did. Satan said, see these kingdoms of the world? These are mine. I'll do with them whatever I want to. I'll forfeit them to you. But you remember, he was trying to get him to forfeit it without the cross. Yeah. If he did, we'd be lost. Amen. He could have kept the kingdom, but he must follow the, he must come back. He was tempted to do it now. That's a hard thing. He was tempted to take his liberty and be the king of the earth without the cross. But if he did, his subjects would have died. Satan would have gladly made that proposition with him. But he said, get behind me, Satan. He didn't do it. He come and suffered and took the hard, rugged route. He took the route of persecution. He took the route of death. Are we this morning willing to do that, that same route that he taken? Are we willing to die? Are we willing to give ourselves up to God? Forfeit all the world and things to serve for him. See? Now, he failed to do it. Willingly to, to forfeit it, Satan was to him, but he didn't do it. Though Jesus was tempted, he overcome for us. He, he endured all temptation for me and for you. See, he could have took it right then. But what did he take the other route for so that we could come be with him? And if he paid such a price as that, then how little would we be not to take it? Amen. When remember, there's nothing here anyhow. If you live a hundred years, why are you going to come to mental in your mind gone, all crippled up and old and shaking? That's where you're going. And that's the end of it. You come now. Amen. Overcome the things. How do you do it? By the Word. Amen. What the Word says you do it. Walk humble. Live before Jesus. He endured all things for you and I. He is our example how to overcome our evil generation as he overcome his evil generation. Remember, when he comes to the earth, there's just as much unbelief or more than there is at any time. It didn't bother him a bit. When they called him a devil instead of God, when they called him everything that could be done, it didn't bother him a bit. He had one objective, mind the Father. Amen. Keep the Word. The Word is God. He had one mind. <clears throat> We're sometimes tempted to go back. Many of you tempted to go back to the denomination. Go back and take up because all the world say, what denomination you belong to? What church are you affiliated with? We're tempted to do that. All of us are. Our sisters are tempted to go back. Go back and join up with the, some of the rest of the churches. With some of the assemblies or churches of God or some of them still be Pentecostal and let your hair cut off and dress just about any way you want to. See, you're tempted to do that. Go back and be pauper as this wicked generation that we're living with when this is the major sin of our days. Right. It's the major sin among our people, worldliness. Yeah. As the Bible said, the lady, lady of see her age was, she's worldly, rich, have need of nothing, don't know that she's naked, yeah. miserable, wretched, blind. That's, right. That's the sin of our days. Amen. When you hear the word of God, call out against it. And then you take the other out, you're unpopular with the world. You're tempted to go back. I know you keep saying to me. I know you're saying all the time. I know you get tired of me harping on these things. I get tired seeing you do it too. Amen. This sin that I'm trying to tell you about. I say, what are you harping on it for? Stop doing it then. I'm trying to save your life. That's right. By the word. I get tired also. They just straighten up. 
this is a sin. It shouldn't be done. Yes, sir. If we are to overcome these things, we're expected to be tempted by them. The world. If you love the world, the things of the world, love of God's not in you, said Jesus. Amen. Now we'll just close and say this. There's a reward for the overcomers. Amen. Let me read something here to you. Turn in your Bible. Let's go back to Revelations, the third, the second chapter. Watch here now. All these things have been talking about to overcome. Now just look at yourself and see. Examine yourself in the spiritual looking glass. See if you've overcome. Now, the first message to the to the angel of Ephesus. I want you to listen to what he said. And Revelations, the second chapter, the seventh verse. This is to that church age. When he told them all what they'd done, left their first love. Seventh verse. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him, the person, not the church, to him that overcometh, overcometh, I will give to eat of the tree of life, Amen. which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Hallelujah. See, the overcomers in Ephesus. Now, the next was Smyrna. Now, the overcomers in that. We listen to this. Now, the eleventh verse. Say, he, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Amen. See, the overcometh. To uh, Pergos, we'll find out what the overcomer had uh, uh, left for him. And this, we'll read the 17th verse to the Pergos church. He that has an ear, that, that's the individual, not the whole group, the individual. That's bride coming out to see the church. Let him that has an ear hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the hidden manna, Amen. and will Amen. give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name, written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receives it. Amen. That's the overcomer the of the church age. Now, the next is the Thyatira. Let's find out what the overcomer had in that day. Let's take the 26th verse. And he that overcometh, and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give the power over the nations. That's right. And shall rule them with a rod of iron, and as a vessel of a potter shall they be broken into shivers. Uh, even as I received of my father, see, with him in his throne. Christ is to rule the nation with a rod of iron. And here is the church that overcome sitting in there with him. To break the nations with a rod of iron. Now, let's take them to the Sardis church. Now, the fifth verse of the third chapter. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and the holy angels. That's to the overcomer in Sardis. Now, let's take now the twelfth verse. Now, this is to the church of... Uh, of Philadelphia, and the twelfth verse. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him my name, name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from God, and I will write upon him my new name. Watch what the overcomers promise. See? Now, now Lady Osea, that's the last church age. There could be some overcomers in that. Amen. Watch out. They remember each church age, the one preceding it inherits all that the other one is offered. Watch up here. Now here's after they've done received all these powers, these new names and everything written that they promised to eat the hidden man and all down through. Watch this last church age. Revelation 3.21. To him that overcometh will I grant to set with me in my throne. Amen. Amen. Even as I so overcome and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. There is a reward for overcomers. Press on, Lily. If it's in you, lay aside the mud and everything else and press towards the top. Yes, sir. To sit with me on my throne. You know, one time, the mother of James and John, we won't have time to read it, the mother of James and John came and asked for this place. Do you know that? Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Lord, let my son sit on one side and my other son sit on the other. 
as a mother's desire for her son. But watch. But that place, Jesus said, was predestinated. This position was not in existence at that time. Why? Notice. It will be granted to them who it is meant for. What? The one that sat at the right hand and the other closest to him was yet an overcomer. See? It was still, he said, I, I don't grant this. I can't grant this. But it will be given after the trial comes. <laughs> Amen. See? I can't give this. But after the trial comes, they'll sit on the right hand and on the left. There's a predestinated seed waiting out there for that. It will be given to the ones that it's promised to. It'll be given there. But the test hasn't come yet. That he hasn't overcome yet. See? The person that was to take this place on one side and another to take it on the other side next to him in the kingdom, it wasn't yet given. See? It hadn't been overcome. The test hadn't failed yet. It will fall in the future. If we suffer for Christ and his word, we will reign with him, for he is the word. Remember, if we suffer for him and his word, we'll reign with him. In his word. Notice, he, our example, overcome and then ascended up. After he conquered death, hell, sickness, grave, everything he conquered, then he ascended up. Yes. And led captivity captive. Yes. Give gifts unto man. That was the Old Testament. With the Old Testament saints that had overcome, yes. they looked for such a person. And they died before it got there. But when this person come, it didn't prevent them which were asleep. That's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Can't lose anyway. Amen. Live or die. What difference does it make? Hallelujah. Won't prevent. See, they looked for that. Even Job back there, he looked for it. He said, I know my Redeemer liveth. Now at the last days he'll stand up on the earth. There was a just man, a perfect man. He offered sacrifice. He done everything that God told him to do. He did it with reverence and respect. He was a prophet. And then Satan come around to tempt him, just like he comes to tempt you. What did he do? He kept standing there. His wife even come out and said, Won't you curse God and die to death? You look so miserable. Sitting there, he said, Thou speakest like a foolish woman. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I never said she's foolish, but you talk like one, see? Said thou speaks like a foolish woman. Said the Lord gave and the Lord taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. He overcome. He overcome what the neighbors had to say. He overcome what all the church members, Belladad and all them had to say. He overcome the bishop, what he had to say. He overcome the cardinal, what he had to say. He overcome the denomination, what they had to say. And he stayed with the justification of the word. Amen. Amen. Yet it cost him everything he had, even his children, to scrape the balls with a piece of crop, sitting on this, yet he overcome. And when that great hour of temptation had finally succeeded, then the clouds rolled back. He looked at every reasonable thing. He said, there's a hope in a tree if it dies. It lives again. And a seed falls in the ground. It rots away. It lives again. But a man layeth down. He giveth up the ghost. He wasteth away. And his children come, his sons, to honor him, to mourn over him. He perceive it not. He don't raise them. Or, oh, there he is. What's the matter? I'm a seed too. I'm something uh, uh, to seed. And I'll go to the ground. I can't rise the more. I'll lay there. Oh, hide me in the grave. Keep me the secret place. That I wrath be past. Point me a time and judge me. As the rocks wear away, water wears away the stone. Oh, he went on saying all these things. You can see all the examples out there. What it was. Oh, he just couldn't see it. Sister Rogers, remember, I preached that at Busty's funeral. See? How did he wear away the stone? And how these things all were, oh, thou would hide in the grave and keep me in the secret place. He kept on pressing. He said, I wish I knowed. I wish I knowed where I could go to a man that could put his hands on me, a sinful man, and a holy God, and talk to him for me. Oh, my. He's there. I know he's there. There's someone there that can do that. There's someone somewhere. Where can I find that person? Where can I find I'll knock on his door and talk to him? Because somebody can only put his hand on me and on God and, and bridge the way for me. Talk if I can only find that person. Oh, where is he at? He searched through his church. He searched through his organization. He couldn't find such a person. And all at once the clouds roll back. 
and he saw that person coming. Oh, his old heart beat for joy. Then something happened. I know my Redeemer liveth. There is such a person. There's still such a person. I know my Redeemer liveth. And though after the skin worms destroys this body, yet in my flesh I'll see God, whom I shall see for myself. He'll stand on the earth in the last days. On that Easter morning when he rose out down her, and Job's body no more than a spoonful of ashes, he was waiting. He was that elected group. He rose from the grave and entered Amen. into the city. Amen. Well, Abraham, Amen. Isaac, Jacob, Job, oh my. Amen. 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 For they look for such a person. And to those who look for Christ the second time, that can overcome the things of this world by his grace to come into him and shut your eyes anything else Amen. to him and his word. He will appear the second time in glory. For the trumpet of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. Those which are alive and remain shall be changed in a moment in a twinkle and I'll be caught up together to meet him in the air. Whether I'm a spoonful of ashes or whether I'm living when it comes, it matters me no difference. Amen. Amen. Oh, right. Doesn't matter because I've caught the vision. Amen. The veil rolled back and I see him. Right. One that could stand and put his hand upon me, a sinful man, and upon a holy God. And he's my propitiation. He is the word that I stand for. In the beginning was the word. He's that word and he represents me there. Amen. Amen. And I'll scream as long as you have He is my resurrection and my life. In all other grounds are sinking sand. All other grounds are sinking sand. As he caught them who looked for that, so will he come to each New Testament saint that's overcome every denominational critic who's ever overcome all the pauper sins of this day, of this age that we're living now, like you did in all the other church ages. Those who overcome in that church age, those who overcome what? I am rich. I have needed nothing. I have, oh, I'm all this and all this, and I'm the bride. I'm this. I have needed nothing. And don't know that you are naked, blind. See that deceiving age that I said? It's not like them that had their heads cut off back at her to get the white stone, not those who uh, died under margins and burnt mistakes and things like that, who won the crown. But it's this deceiving age now. That think that they're everything. Well, I'm a church member. I'm a good man. I'm a good woman. I do this. I don't have to do this. But he that overcometh. Amen. He that overcomes all those worldly things of this age. What will they do? All will set with him in his throne. They will go in the rapture when he comes. Oh, my. What do I care then? What should we care what the world says? Amen. What should we care what anybody else says? Amen. The great Holy Spirit is among us. His pure power leads us and guides us. His word is vindicated before us. His love is in our heart. The world is in the back. We pass from death into life. Amen. The world thinks you're crazy, but must Jesus bear this cross alone? And all the world go free. There's a cross for everyone. And there's a cross for me. Thirty-three years in the field of this consecrated cross, I'll bear till death shall set me free. Let my brothers turn me down and say whatever they want to. What turn you down? Behold, this word I stand in this alone. <laughs> this consecrated cross I'll bear until death shall set me free and then go home in the rapture a crown to wear. That's what we all want, isn't it? Yeah. That's what we want. That's our, that's our hope and plea. No other thought have we but that one upon Jesus Christ and upon his righteousness we stand alone. Yeah. And his righteousness in his word. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. And the Word is still vindicating itself. Overcome how? By taking the Word, the promise, in humility. Yeah. <laughs> Humbly walking this constant great cross out there hey. until death Thank shall you. set me free. Then go home, a crown to wear. For when that trumpet sounds, you can bear me in the sea, but the trumpet will wake me. Amen. Amen. I'm going home one day. Amen. Until then, I'll struggle on. Amen. Amen. Bearing this cross, keeping my eyes out on people, but up on Calvary yonder. For he was my example. He showed how to do it, and his example will gladly follow it day by day. I'm following Jesus each step of the way. I'm following Jesus. 
She'd step on the way. Don't you like that? Oh, how I think all of him day by day, each step of the way. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, an hour and 15 minutes now, standing here trying to take your word and explain to the people how to overcome. You told us how it's done. You didn't only tell us, but you showed how it was done. You led us. You showed us how to do it. Receive the word inside of us. And be sure to hold that word. It is written in every temptation. But be humble. Walk humbly. Then we have conquered through you, through your power, which has already conquered our enemy. And the only thing we have to do is, is just walk humble with faith, believing that, and our badge of identification of the Holy Ghost. And Satan has to move. There's handkerchiefs laying here. They represent sick people. They're needy, Lord. And they read in this infallible word where they took from the body of St. Paul handkerchiefs and aprons. They were laid upon the sick people. Evil spirits went out of them. And great miracles were done. Now you're the same Lord Jesus today. Paul preached this word and wrote this word. The same word that we're trying to follow. Because he took the Old Testament and patterned it and showed that it was a type. That all of the Old Testament was a perfect type of the new. Oh Lord, may we follow that example. We see our Lord, what he did. And we realize that those Old Testament saints this morning, we find out that they did go. When Jesus raised, they went with him. Lord, we believe that we'll go. When he sounds the trumpet, we believe it, that the bride will go forth at that day and will join with the, the Hebrew group of it. And together there will be a wedding supper in glory. Those are waiting. We pray now your mercy and grace upon us. Overcomers, Lord, overcomers, we long to be overcome us. Lord Jesus, you overcome the world now. I pray that you let every person here this morning lay every sin aside. Lay aside the weight that does so easily beset us that we might run with patience the race that's set before us. Paul spoke this, our Heavenly Father, over there in the book of the Hebrews, that we should lay aside every weight in that 12th chapter that he spoke this. After he had already showed by example back there, those who did go on, those who did not go on, those who lukewarmly followed, those who followed up in the front, those who lingered behind, all he showed the example. Then he turned and said, let us lay aside every weight, every little teeny thing that besets us that we might run with patience the race that's set before us. Looking to him, the author, and the finisher of our faith, who gave us the example. We do that this morning, Father. Now with our heads bowed, I check real close, real, real close. And that be real deeply sincere. It just, it just takes, that's all it takes. Your check and your sincere. Be real careful as you're checking now. Search me, Lord. Try me. Is there an evil in me? If there is, Lord, let me lay it down right here now. This place where I'm bowed is your altar. And I'll lay it down right here now. Put my feet up on it when I walk away. It's going to lay there. The power of your blood will consume it. I want to be an overcomer. I have something that's bothering me, Lord. I want to overcome this morning. I can, but you have been told that by your word. I lay it down now, Lord, and I'll lay my feet on it as I pass out of this building this morning. Go to know that it's put in the, the tub of God's bleach. It'll never be remembered no more. I will now confess it and ask for mercy. With our heads bowed, our eyes closed, our hearts thinking, that's the door to the soul. Is there something that you want to lay aside this morning? 
something that you want to overcome and you've tried it so hard, but this morning, you're just going to quit trying. You're just going to accept what he did. I want you to just raise your hand. Lord, I want to overcome. A certain thing bothers me. Lord Jesus, you see those hands. Now, as your servant, standing between the living and dead, I condemn everything that's bothering these people and myself. And I ask that in the name of Jesus Christ, we can leave it laying here on the altar of God and walk away this morning free as overcomers. If our sisters hasn't had the grace before, may it be granted now, Lord. If our brothers hasn't had the grace, may it be granted now. And may in humility, mother with her children, instead of being arrogant, she knows she's studying. She's a preacher to them little children. Her life is an example. Dad is an example to mother, for he is the head of the house. And if mother's been trying to boss him around, she'll never do it no more. If he's been using her for a floor mat, it'll never be done no more. She's a helpmate. Grant it, Lord. May all these things that hinder us, Lord, be taken away. We, we are consecrating ourselves, Father, for the, what time of life we have ahead of us, knowing this, that we've got to come to the end of it, and that right away. So this morning, we take this opportunity after this message. We take the opportunity, Lord, to come because we are bidden to come. Cast your cares upon him, for he careth for you. I know you care, Lord. You cared enough to die for us. And we surely can care enough to come and accept what you died for. Sanctify us, Lord. Fill us anew with the Holy Spirit. May the Holy Ghost just reign in our hearts supremely, that we'll walk, forgetting the things that are in the past, the muck and mire that we once lived in. We're oppressed towards the mark of the high calling, where our lights can so shine in sweetness and humility. So every passerby can say, there's a Christian lives there on that hill. That person, that woman, that man is a real consecrated flower of God. They're so sweet, so kind, always loving and sweet and understanding. Granted, Father, let us be salty that the earth might thirst. Granted, Father, and overcome the things of this world and the cares of this life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I can't. Let's just raise her hand. Calling water, come up out of the mud. A higher life. Something's in you is pulling you that way. What is it? It's him. Down in the mud, little flowers. You've got life in there pressing to you. That's what calls you. Come up out of the mud. Follow. Follow. Now do you mean it? Now close your eyes. Where is Just consecrate yourself. 
deeply, sincerely, all your heart. What if this is the last time you'd ever be permitted to pray? It might be. I hope not. It may be. Then be sure now, real sure, real sure. Remember the door closed one day. It's all over. Ask, you shall receive. Just think of all the glory that he's offered to you. Everything that he's done. I believe, Lord. I believe. I believe that you're my overcomer. I just walk with you, Lord. I want to stay close to you. That where you are, there I want to be. And remember, you told us, Father, that we would forever be with the Lord when we'd be caught up. We just got a, a glimpse of him now as he walks with us now, but then we'll, what a great thing it is just to know that he's in our, our midst. What will it be when we'll be with him forever? We so love all of our activities. We can go out a ride. We can go shopping. We can go hunting, fishing, or whatever we might do in pleasures. But oh, when the church opens, we want to meet our Lord. That's greatest of all things. Then thank you promised us and forever be with the Lord. Set with him in his room and be with him forever. Oh God, we humbly, with, with bowed heads, we accept it, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you feel you can just leave now everything, every burden? You can just walk over above it now. If you do, raise up your hand and say, By God's grace, I laid this trial down. I won't fight it anymore. I'm just going to take a hold of his hand and start walking on. I fought, Brother Branham. I've tried to quit smoking. I've, I've tried to let my hair grow out. I've tried to do this. I've, got, I've tried so hard, Brother Branham. I just can't do it. Don't try it anymore. Just take a hold of his hand and say, Father, you put my hand in the sleeve. I'm just going to give you my hand. I'm going to walk on, Lord, looking to you. It'll happen. He'll dress you like a real Christian. You'll be a real Christian. Until I see you tonight, God love you and be with you. You're my children of the gospel. Amen. You're the purchase. Now I'll give you your pastor back. Hallelujah.